recording to start. So we, we start and usually as a announcement. I know the group is still small. So, and I hope we have so many announcements that we need to communicate to you guys. So I don't know if we can probably wait for some minutes so that we can communicate announcements later. So then we start the, the usual, the usual stand up by hearing from you how things are going. How did you manage your weekend and also updates on your previous uh, challenge? Any broker so far before we start the presentations for groups? So my weekend was great and also last week was very uh, enjoyable. So I had time to rest, of course, uh, watching Arsenal, watching Manu. So everything is good. Now I start the week by, with energy. I hope you guys are also doing the same, but you never know. So let's hear from some people sharing with us. Then we have to announce, the, we have to, to share announcements after when the group is very like improved. So we have a good number of people on the call. We will share the announcements. I hope Emilien is having many announcements regarding the graduation. So we have announcements regarding this week's challenge. I know you guys are not seeing the challenge document. We have to be communicated about the reason why that's the case. So let's hear from some people sharing with us their progress. Please also share how you guys are excited for finishing successfully this intensive training. Almost uh, your feelings. So I could call some names if nobody is willing to share so that to save, save time. Let's hear from Mohammed. Yes, good morning. Morning, morning. Yes, uh, am I audible? Yeah, sure. Yes, um, so a little update from my side. Um, last week, uh, I was, I have, I had a, a wonderful time working with the team, a wonderful team, communicating with each, with each other and um, doing the task that uh, I was assigned for. And uh, throughout the week, um, my energy was up. I enjoyed every day as the training is going to finish. Uh, but at the end of uh, the week, I had some issues that blocked me from uh, delivering uh, the tasks, but uh, I restart my energy yesterday and fulfilled all the missing tasks. And uh, my my feeling about finishing the 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 program, I feel like the journey is starting right now. Not the past twelve weeks was just preparing for the for the battle we will uh, be in, uh, into in the next months. So I feel like it's the time for us to go to the old world and to fight for finding a job. So I'm uh, excited. I'm so excited. OK, thanks. Yes, that, thanks, that Mohammed. Was all, all right. Actually, in week 12, I normally ask people how their, their readiness in terms of um, job searching. So do you think you're ready for like, applying for the jobs and also moving forward? Yes, uh, I could consider myself as uh, a ready person for the job searching because I try to apply for a couple of uh, jobs the last week so i feel like i'm ready uh mentally and uh, mentally and physically i'm ready uh in terms of skills um i might need some time but uh i'm ready 
right. Any worry about that? Uh, about the skills? The... Yeah, about the skills, about how no. you feel like. Okay, thanks. No. Thank you. Thanks. Any other person volunteering to speak? Sharing their week, uh, 11 experience, and also any broker that they can share with us, as well as how they are excited or not excited about week 12. Anyone from the group? Teresa from Adivyat, please share with us. If you can unmute and speak. So hello everyone. I'm I'm not sure if it's already started. Um is anyone no, already started. leading it in academy? Yeah, uh I've started. So they are sharing about their their week eleven updates before we jump into the presentation. Okay. Yeah. Great. So I, I was asking Ad Adija to share, but it seems like uh, she can't speak. I can move to the next person. So Nathaniel, Nelson. Uh, okay. Not my mom, sir. I'll go. I'll just go. Uh, okay. Uh, to answer some of the questions. Uh, it's somehow being like being in the end, you know, it's scary and exciting at the same time. And I hope like uh, I would be successful after taking <laughs> this day. Yeah. And the past week was um, our uh, intense week. It worked really hard and I had uh, amazing teammates like the group. All the group members they are amazing. Thank you. How about uh, how are you ready for the job search sprints uh, after this uh, week, twelve weeks of training? So tell us about it, comparing the skills you've got from week from week one to today. Uh, I think I'm somehow ready to apply for a job, and uh, I believe I will try to somehow uh, enrich myself with uh, with, uh, with with the skills I can to gain from the academy. Uh, I'll try to improve myself with every chance I I, I will somehow encounter. Yeah, uh, I think I'm ready. Okay. So thanks. Um do you wanna jump in with the presentation? Yeah. But Great. before you before you before you jump in, so I waited for the group to be like enough so that we can share announcements uh, instead of sharing announcements when the group was small. So I think now we have the uh, right number of people on the call. We can move on with the announcements. So the first announcement is that the for this week. Week 12, there is now going to be a challenge, uh, week challenge. So I guess you're going to choose from your projects from week one to week 11 and choose one that you are going to improve on. Uh, correct me if I'm wrong from 10 Academy or the other day. I mean, that's correct. We, we will have more discussion on that um, on later on the challenge also. Okay. All right. So maybe that's the update. Ten Academy, please. Yeah. Hello, everyone. Uh, thank you very much. And welcome to week 12. This is the last week. So we have a lot of information to give you. So the first one, the first announcement from me, I've texted you on Slack. Please check. I'm asking with the video. Some of you haven't submitted the video. I mean, Ten Academy experience video. You need to submit it at least today. Then for the pictures, I think it's just like one person I've texted you. I think you received the message. Also submit that photo. Yeah, uh, that's the announcement for now. And um, 
uh, as we discussed discuss on Slack, uh, we need people to perform anything, either poem or song, anything. So if you have anything uh, to perform during graduation ceremony, please text me on Slack. Yeah, I'll also be uh, testing you guys, asking if you have something. But if you have something and I didn't test you in time, please do. Thank you very much. Thanks, thanks, Emilian and uh, Everest. Everest, do you have any other announcement or anyone from the team? Yeah, good morning. I have an announcement. Yeah, go on. Yeah, good morning, everyone. So uh, I sent on the, so last, last week, Friday, that tomorrow's uh, stand-up will be led by uh, my trainees. It will be coordinated and managed by trainees. So we want you all to think together and uh, decide on who, who is going to lead the stand-up tomorrow. Uh, and your this your topic of discussion also you be the one to select what you want to discuss on but it has to be based on maybe the previous challenges we've had so that's a, that's it for my hand wonderful thanks um anything else okay if not i think then um and also i haven't forgotten like the the team working on Coming up with a strategy, we will probably either later in the challenge walkthrough or on Wednesday we can discuss, you can present, uh, and we can test it this week as well. Just um, on that, and with that, let's just go on. Basically, you know, probably as a team you can present, and that was that would probably make it easier. So you can all just then in that way, like because there are five teams, each can take about let's say. Um, 10 minutes overall, like the entire team speaking. But please just now, no, you know, kind of hands up, or if you want me to go like in a certain order, you can go on. Uh, I can go on like that. So maybe just um, Nathaniel, Melissa, then you can tell us about which group you are, and you can also call on any other group uh, or group members to be able to speak. Uh, okay. Uh, I'm Odev Wright. Yes, you are. Okay. Uh, uh, I'll, let me share my screen. And, uh, I'm from group one, by the way. Great. Okay. Let me share my screen. Okay. It's visible, right? Yes, it is. It is visible. Okay. Uh, so let me just walk you through what we have accomplished and also all overall since i'm the first presenter let me somehow i'll try to point out the overall objective of the this week's the past week's challenge and my the my teammate isaac will some uh, will provide a demo uh, about the like an ending one for my presentation. So like uh, the past week's challenge was on computer vision for creative optimization and also for KPI maximization through image analysis. So uh, what what we have actually and let me just talk about the client. Sorry, uh, our client was uh, Adludio, uh, an online mobile online mobile ad business, and Adludio provides. Uh, service to its clients like an ad, uh, an ad service and so uh, we got the data from the creative arts and the main task was to develop a deep, a deep learning based computer vision algorithm that segments objects from creative assets and relate them to the KPI parameters of the corresponding campaign so like by the KPI parameters uh, we means we mean like the engagement rate and the, the click through rate so uh, from the data that was provided to us, we were able to extract some features. The extracted features were uh, logo, emotion from the, for the human faces, the transition time between click and engagement screen, audio extraction, tran text transcription from, extra from the extracted audio, sentiment analysis on the extracted audio, word count from the, extra from the transcribed text, dominant colors, the CTA button, and oh, uh, I think I somehow okay. Uh, this was the double. Sorry, 
this is my problem. And that was the features we extract. So the next step was to somehow train uh, an email model or a deep learning model. So we have uh, somehow tried to uh, train an email model and also uh, a deep learning model. So uh, somehow this uh, upload uh, so I've tried to create using the CTA position. So uh, I've grabbed the X and the coordinates for the CTA position, uh, the X and Y. So the basically the, the coordinates of the starting point of the click uh, the CTA button, uh, somehow visualized like this. So let me go through the model results. The random, uh, we choose random first for the for our model, for machine learning model. So the future importance for engage for predicting an engagement rate uh, from among the features extracted. Uh, so somehow like uh, the beginning frame and also the ending frame has a lot of like the people's emotion in that has a lot of effect based on our findings and somehow like the other ones like audio in audio counts audio frame count are somehow a little bit lower but more, more than the average and uh, we tried like to tweak our model but the, this was <laughs> i'll show the prediction result and the original result so this was uh, as best as we can we we go to with using the random forest model actually uh, so this was this was our prediction uh, true label versus pred predicted labels on the engagement rate so when it, when we come to the click through rate somehow it's kind of the same but now it's like the end frame has uh, a higher like a higher feature important and uh, when for the engagement it was the beginning uh, the beginning frame uh, the, the emotions of the beginning frame the emotional analysis for the beginning frame so for for the click through rate like we can see that the uh, in frame edge has uh, somehow more uh, feature importance and again we can see here uh, the random forest actually didn't perform that much well so like we have to somehow move to another model so we choose the deep learning model and i will try to demonstrate some of the plots we got from them like the loss and some other values and we we'll jump to a demonstration so uh, we can see for engagement rates uh, rate like the validation loss and the actual loss so like after somehow uh, the loss pretty much dropped uh, and also like we can see the, the loss like how much it dropped through like the consecutive epochs and also the mean absolute error too uh, somehow the the deep learning model after like somehow we we tried it uh, first for somehow few fewer futures for example like uh, only the CTA button in the dominant colors, but the the validation the loss were were really high and the prediction the accuracy wasn't uh, somehow was really low. So like for but after we we extracted the uh, all the futures I I mentioned here somehow the model got uh, somehow a, a little bit, a little bit better the deep learning model and also for the click through rate we can see the loss here. And also, uh, we can see like how how much it dropped uh, through the epochs, and I think uh, Isaac can take it from here. Thank you. Thanks. Yep, um, Isaac. I, I think yeah, just because of the time that I, I can see that you didn't focus on, on a number of some things, but I see that actually the you know already you know. You've got some information that's interesting. Okay, Isaac, go on. Cool. Okay, I will mean, continue. I'm just trying to share my screen. Your audio is really bad. Oh, is it not available? Um, How I about mean, you? we can't. Okay, now is much better. Yeah, go on. Okay. We see your screen, so go on. 
Okay. Uh, so, uh, as Nathaniel has mentioned, uh, we have uh, like this uh, main page. Uh, main page. For demo purpose, we have selected to uh, create art creatives. So, first one is a good performing uh, one. So, in order to uh, test the, how the creative is generating the CTR or the ER parameter uh, results, we can just paste the link and uh, go directly to predict. So this process will just automate by itself the capturing of uh, uh, video uh, starting and ending frame of the uh, I think maybe your network is um So in order for the uh, system to capture the audio, I have to just change the audio from my input to just the speaker one. So let me go through that again and uh, I will show you how it is, it performs. So can you hear me? Am I audible, right? Yes, you are audible. Okay. That explains why you were silent, but yeah, go on, you are audible. Okay, so uh, let me just click like that. So it just automates by itself the opening of the browser, the capturing of the screen, and uh, all those things. So it just clicks the link by itself. It is recording the video and it has already taken the front page. So you can see in the console that the game has completed. So it just automatically closes itself. Now it is uh, creating the video. And see here that the video has been cropped and uh, it is now generating the audio file and the rest, yeah, the frames. So it, it is creating the frames right now. Now it, it is predicting the emotions for the beginning and the ending. It's generating the text. So it finishes, you can see yeah, the landing and the ending frame is shown in here. The crop video, as you can see, it is the video is uh, an area of, of the canvas only. So the rest is not needed. So we just cropped the, that area and generated the frames. Uh, as you can see also, there is an audio. You can hear it maybe, but I can just it is extracted from the text. So the the final uh, data frame will look like this. It will have a game ID, the audio duration, audio intensity. These features, uh, yeah, text. The text is uh, transcribed from the audio, and uh, we have performed the sentiment analysis on the text. Uh, the colors uh, are the occurrence in there. Uh, these are the features that not known as mentioned earlier. So we can see the prediction. Uh, this is a good performing uh, prediction. So we can take uh, uh, add game ID and uh, actually uh, compare the results. So, so these, are, uh, are, these are the results, the final one. Okay. So as you can see, uh, the final one is the CTR. Uh, we have uh, roughly uh, an approximate value, 0 0.09 and 0 0.06. For the engagement rate, we can see that 0 0.5 is predicted and the engagement rate is 0 0.22. Maybe if I have time, I can show the second uh, demo, but I don't think so. So yeah, it no, just I, I think that's sufficient. I think that's yeah. sufficient. Okay. Yes. Excellent. Okay. Thanks. Thanks, guys. It's good. Okay. So, group two. 
who is okay. the Gaga. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. So let me share my screen. Okay. Can you see it? Yep, we can see it. Go for it. Yeah, okay. So uh, I'm going to present the objective, the provided data, uh, the feature we selected, and uh, we also used some dimensional reduction uh, using PCA, then the model development part, and the result we got. So as group one mentioned, the objective is to uh, to develop a model that predicts the performance of a creative given the, their asset. Uh, so the task is to predict uh, its performance. That is the data. Uh, we have two types of data. The first is the CSV file, which contains the creative ID and the, its performance. The second is uh, the asset that's related to each creative ID. Uh, then um, we have took this approach we have multiple uh, source of data type. We have text, logo detection, dominant colors, uh, CTA detection, motion, and then we have also object detection. So after extracting all this uh, feature from the given data, we have to feed it to a model that will predict the, this uh, performance. Uh, then we have extracted this feature, logo, its width, its height, uh, and also this position in the preview. Uh, and also the same thing for the CTA, the engagement instruction, and uh, for the object, uh, we also calculate, we used YOLO uh, object detection. Using that, we get the width, the height, and the location of each object in, in a given uh, frame or preview. Uh, then we extracted color composition, uh, aesthetic feature, and also we extracted text, uh, the content of the text. Uh, the word length and the character count. Uh, by extracting those features, we get some CSV, some data frame. Then we have to apply some dimensionality reduction using PCA because we have to remove uh, some columns. Uh, first, we have to remove some columns which has zero entries in all of its row. And then we use uh, PCA to reduce the large dimension to have avoid the dimensionality curse. Uh, then uh, we have designed this model. We have three parts. The first one takes the feature extracted from text and it is multi-layer perceptron. And uh, for the second, uh, for the features that are extracted from the image, like the logo, the CTA position, we uh, merged those features together and fit to the second uh, branch of the model, which is also multi-layer perceptor. Then finally, we feed the preview image directly to the to a deep learning model, which is pre-trained mobile net view to deep learning architecture. Then the final layer, we concatenated it together and we finally fed it to, to, a, to a regressor, which is dense with 20 neuron, and finally a dense with one layer, which, which will do the regression on the, to get the performance which is CTA click through rate CTR. Then we have parameters, happy parameters, uh, the learning rate, the decay rate, the push, batch size, then number of multi layer perceptron in the multi or hidden layers, uh, activation function that we use in each uh, neuron, uh, then uh, number of neurons per layers. For the pre-trained model, we we just choose mobile nets, but for this one, we, we, it is also possible to check different pre-trained deep learning model. Finally, the loss function we used is mean absolute percentage error. So we trained this model and uh, we have got this uh, graph on the model. Uh, and uh, we trained this one on 150 epochs we were planning to do on more epochs, but uh, the instance was down uh, in Saturday in the midnight. So this is what we achieved. So thank you.
then my group can add if they feel something is left. Excellent, but it would be nice just to have any of the group to add on the accuracy and anything. Anyone from group two? Um, hi, hello. Hi, hi, General. Degaga, can you mute? There is a bug, uh, an echo on your side. Yeah, um, General okay. So due to time, we didn't test using other machine learning models, but we used the CNN to predict the KPIs and calculate the accuracy. So that was, that was it. Yeah, how much is, what is accuracy? What is, you know, training is one thing, but what is, what is it? Like, how did it do? Um, so as I mean, the, I'm oh, sorry, we realized so, that if it is trained for more epochs, it will get better. Okay. For the accuracy, so, we didn't measure as much. Okay. And you didn't plot anything? I mean, is that, is that because like you had the model finally run only on Saturday? And so that was the case? Um, yeah, yeah. Okay. So the just the mean absolute error, the loss function basically will tell you, of course, just something about accuracy, not not one to one. But you could have, I mean, basically, you are saying like you could reduce, but you don't know how much if you had to plot it as a function of like at least um, what is in the right to be the kind of expected or the label, the regression. And then the y they predicted, you could at least see the dispersion and all that. Just that plot would have given you a lot. Do you want to add? Yeah. yeah. The, the final mean uh, absolute error was around 140, mm -hmm. something like that. Uh, actually, we didn't perform the validation and the testing. We only did the training and the, tra the final training value on 150 approaches around 140 uh, errors. Yeah, I mean, that is an absolute value that has, that depends on many things, uh, including your batch size and, and, you know, what kind of normalization you used. But so in a, in a way, it would have been nice just to plot what actually on the validation data and the test data, you know, how much it performed. But overall, I think your approach is good. It's just that you dropped it just at the end. Like, I mean, for me, like, that's where you have done all the hard work and an amazing work. And then, you know, basically you, you just dropped it like in some way, like the, the group member should have really been working hard. I mean, one person could be doing that, but one other person could have just been like looking at these things. Um, so, so I think that's the, but, but overall, I think the approach is good. So well done. Is Michael, are you in group two? Are you? Okay. Uh, we had some models with five epochs on our GitHub. The plot of the mean squared error had been traveling and have some 5,000. I mean, yeah. uh, those are fine. Yeah. Yeah, I can't talk right now. I'm a taxi. Sorry for that. Then I can maybe talk later. Okay. Good. And what about the other members? What did they feel? So I, I see three now. Are there more? What? Why didn't they just try to compute on live? Given that you know this was a hard work you guys did extracting and getting the modeling, it's quite impressive. But it could have just been a game changer if someone was like, if everyone was like putting the effort um, and try to compute. But I mean, overall, good. So I'm okay. Let's go to the next group then, group three. Okay. Uh, hello. Uh, good morning, everyone. Okay, let me share my screen and we will present it uh, as a group. I will start and uh, the rest of the group will be, uh, will come uh, after me. So uh, can you see my screen? Yes, we do. 
Okay, so uh, this week's project was uh, computer vision for creative optimization, uh, and we are group three. The members of these groups are Imitna, Gideon, uh, Henok Desale, Mohammed, and Tigisti. Uh, so uh, our design diagram looks like this. So uh, first, uh, we have uh, uh, that we have given a data, a data set of asset data. Uh, assets data and performance CSV file, uh, but we in, in our understanding the data was not enough, so we uh, tried to scrape uh, from the link given in the performance performance CSV file. So to scrape the data, we used CD name and uh, Pi Auto GUI, uh, okay. and uh, we merged the asset data and. Uh, uh, scrape data and we get a full data set. So uh, in the full data set, we made feature extraction, like color detection, uh, logo detection, number of words counting, face detection and emotion recognition, CTA button detection, uh, number of objects counting and uh, age detection. So uh, each, each uh, feature uh, prints out uh, its own CSV file, so we merged them to merge uh, those CSV files. We used Airflow DAX, uh, and uh, in the Airflow, uh, we first we read data uh, from those CSV files. We merged them, and then uh, this the merged data will go to the modeling part. Uh, and also, uh, we also tried to put the each CSV file to a database, Postgres database, uh, and we created a table and we put uh, the data into uh, a database, both the merged data and each file. So uh, for us, uh, we also tried to demo out using Redash for uh, data database visualization. Uh, and stream lit up for uh, some feature uh, extracted visualization and uh, and the next part is the modeling part. Uh, so uh, let me start uh, from the data collection. So in the data collection part, uh, we try to extract the start frame and the end frame. Uh, and uh, in this case we faced a challenge in the extractions of the end frame. Uh, in the end frame some of the some of the uh, creatives needs uh, complicated engagement uh, like zigzag or uh, swiping. So uh, we uh, we are we were unable to do that using uh, Pyoto GI uh, that was the first challenge and we tried to make to pass that challenge uh, by making us semi automatic when this when this kind of things ca came we just uh, do we just draw ourselves and we tried to collect uh, around a half data uh, so uh, after the data collection the feature extraction part came uh, so so logo and city part will be presented by Mohammed. Yes. So um, in the logo uh, detection and the button position uh, was the most challenging part. And the fact that it's a global issue, companies like Amazon face the same issues and they invested on teams and budget and you know huge infrastructure for uh, overcoming this problem. So the challenge was uh, all the available solution work as an ABI. And we we can't risk uh, our sensitive data to be sent to, to third parties. So um, also the available models we 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 need uh, the models need to be trained in a large amount of data and uh, to sell to solve this issue beside to solve this issue besides it costs time and money. So uh, our proposed solution was to use uh, in a creative way that maximizes the quality of the results and minimize the cost. Uh, we use template matching method, which is um, available on uh, OpenCV library 
uh, as you could see uh, in the two images, uh, we use a template matching, uh, uh, we give the model a picture and uh, the picture of the logo and ask uh, it to locate the position of the image. Uh, we extracted uh, the uh, starting coordinate, uh, the starting co coordinations or uh, points of the logo and the CTA button. And uh, the result was more than 60% of the logo position was detected and more than 80% uh, of the CT, uh, CTA button was uh, also detected. For future uh, recommendation, uh, training, uh, training our own model will be uh, a good point to start with for getting accurate result. And we should use Sol YOLO 7 as a model for uh, the prediction. So that was my part. Thank you. Um, next is the uh, color. Uh, we, there are so many features or properties of color that can be extracted for images. We chose to extract uh, or extract the different colors. Uh, we used X colors to uh, extract the uh, color composition of images. And uh, we, um, we uh, uh, like, um, I collected the dominant, uh, the, the, uh, the top um, uh, colors that uh, like have the, uh, the most occurrence within, a, within an image. Uh, one issue is that uh, choosing tolerance, which is a grouping of colors in an image, uh, setting it too low uh, will give us like, um, um, we can group colors together, but then uh, we'll lose uh, the sense of if a is a image is colorful or not. Um, so uh, we also move to also uh, extract the colorfulness metric. Um, it's, um, uh, yes, so the colorful metric is uh, like a, it's a metric to, that measures the, like in a number. How Emisa, Emisa, yes. uh, Hi, Michael or Emisa, I don't know which one of them, like there is now a big noise. Okay, Emisa, go. Yes, uh, so uh, the colorful metric is uh, like uh, we chose a metric that was defined in a paper by Hasler and Sustrank. Uh, it's uh, like it's a, that puts in a number how people perceive uh, an image to be colorful or not. You can see an example in that in the slide of uh, like uh, the least colorful image in the data set and the most colorful. Uh, we use OpenCV to apply this uh, metric from our data set. Uh, there are so many like there are other like color quality features that we can extract, uh, uh, like basic uh, colors, uh, the amount of basic colors like blue, red, and black, that could be like in a future step. Um, uh, another thing we extracted is a uh, text, yes. Uh, we use Byte uh, Tesseract uh, library to, to extract colors from the images. Uh, the issue we found is uh, like sometimes uh, there is a low detection accuracy of text like sometimes the images you don't find any the i mean the code doesn't find any text in the image even though there is text because the background is complicated like it's too colorful it has the lines and stuff we experimented using uh, OpenCV to like um to uh, like change the image background to grayscale to adjust uh, like the background color but uh, we still uh, um, we didn't get a, a high um, like detection accuracy. So we uh, this is something that also can be fixed uh, in the future with more like um, uh, uh, optimized uh, uh, um, um, like um, <laughs> optimizing the code to like uh, maybe also adding uh, on top of each other like the co uh, text detection with uh, color composition and maybe also like uh, object because like it just can tell us like something about the image but uh, background if it's if it's uh, like crowded or uh, it has so many colors we can like put a specific a special a special uh, algorithm for that so this is uh, for text exactly i'm done um, Okay, next uh, we proceed to object detection and also counting the number of objects in an image. So we used OpenCV to detect the objects and count the objects. So we first have to ch convert the objects into grayscale using OpenCV. And then we do some thresholding on the image and we use dilation process to remove black distortions. And then we used 
OpenCV's uh, find contours method to, to to find the contours of the image and then store the result inside a list. And then the, the count of those contours will be taken as the count of the objects. And one of the challenges we faced during the object detection phase was OpenCV, uh, it tends to perform well in certain situations, especially when the image isn't crowded, but when we, we have like complicated geometries and so on, it kind of uh, falls apart and it's not as accurate. So in the future, we plan on using a, a, a purpose-built or a specialized uh, classifier to increase our accuracy. And next we have uh, emotion uh, face detection and emotion extraction. So for the emotion extraction, we used uh, OpenCV initially to detect the faces using the cascade classifier. So this would reduce the amount of time like detecting emotions on images that don't have any human faces inside them. So we used OpenCV to to find the faces and like draw rectangles around those faces and store those as a list. And if that list is not empty, then there is a face and OpenCV has drawn a rectangle around it. And then we use those results and pass them to DeepFace. It's a Python library used to extract very like, uh, uh, it's a very impressive library. It can extract emotions and it can give you like a range of uh, emotions. And it can also give you the dominant emotion from that picture. It can also give you the, uh, it's, it's estimated, uh, it's estimated predictions of what that face's race could be. And it also gives you the dominant race. It can also provide you the gender and it was uh, accurate to, to find like the different faces, especially if the face was in the, in, in the profile position, uh, deep face and open CV tend to perform really well. Thank you. Excellent. Is there next Ayla Mikael, do you continue or? Hello. Uh, I was talking. Uh, uh, I was on yeah. So uh, we tried to detect uh, age ages uh, as another feature. The reason we tried to detect uh, ages is because the object detecting model uh, was not was not working per perfectly. So uh, we uh, assumed that uh, if we detected the age uh, and like if we have too many edges, we can predict that the image has uh, so many uh, so many objects. And if it uh, has more edges, uh, we can say that the image is uh, the, the image is with small number of objects. So this is a support for the object detection model. So uh, let me uh, continue. And uh, after uh, these old features, we merged them. Uh, first, we collected and passed to uh, the Airflow. Uh, the Airflow merged and put the, the database and prepared for the uh, ML model. So for the model in part, uh, Gideon will continue. Okay, so for the modeling part, we initially start with selecting the features we need. So for example, not all the columns uh, were required. So we dropped the, the columns that weren't required or that had uh, deprecated results. Uh, and after that, we converted the categorical data into numerical data using label encoder. So uh, the categorical data would be like the emotion, the race, the dominant color is a hex value and so on. So we converted those into numerical data. And then we extracted the target columns, which in our case are the uh, the engagement uh, rate score and the click-through rate score. So those will be separated from the features that will be used to train the model. And for the model part, we, we built a pipeline that will scale and train the model using a scalar. And the model we chose was a random forest model. And the the, the the data which we merged will be used to train the model. 
So the first one is the start, the start, uh, the start frame data, which will be used to predict the engagement rate. And the second one will be the end frame data, which we use to predict the click through rate. Uh, and the predictions and the model score are in, on the next slide. So these are the, the model score for the end frame prediction. This will predict the click through rate. And this is the, the mean squared error of our model. So the, the model, the model score is, isn't as, like, as, as impressive as we'd like. And one of the, one of the culprits might be the feature importance, which is found on the next slide. And, uh, as we can see on, from the feature importance extracted from our predictions, the model has put, uh, too much emphasis on the position of the button. So as we can see, we, we didn't, our model, uh, uh, our model like features importance where the do the percentage of the dominant colors with respect to the total number of pixels and the start, the start, uh, X coordinate and the start Y coordinate of the CTA buttons. So in the future, we, we plan on improving like the, the accuracy of the model and the predictions by extracting our features uh, at a greater, at a higher accuracy using purpose-built models and so on. So we'll have better features to train our model. Thank you. So if, let me just take one minute and uh, show uh, the demo. Uh, let me start from their flow part. Uh, this is uh, their flow graph we built. So first we read data in the merge, then it creates table and then inserts the data into a database. So uh, in the redash part, we uh, we try to fetch the merged data uh, and we try to draw a table and charts on that. So this is uh, the table view. Uh, as you can see, uh, we have uh, 23 pages, so we can see all the data. Uh, and also, uh, let me show you one diagram. Uh, this diagram is, uh, let, me show, let me see, okay. This diagram is the game ID and the AR relation. So uh, we, I group them uh, in the uh, objects count. So the blue parts are uh, uh, the, a creatives which has one object and the red R2 uh, and uh, and so on. Uh, the maximum number of objects we detected is 24. Uh, so let me just show another chart. So um, the, uh, this one is uh, we grouped the data uh, using gender and we tried to see uh, the uh, so ERN using the game ID. So uh, the left one is the, the first one is uh, the data that we didn't detect the gender, and the second one is for women's, and third one is for the men. Uh, and also, we also tried to see the game ID and the AR relation in the uh, scatter plot. Uh, so these are uh, the charts we draw on Redash. So, uh, and also we tried to build a Streamlit app. Uh, it's just uh, tried to show the uh, some samples image and the table view. So this is the logo detection part, age detection, uh, and the detected CTA part. And uh, we have also the detailed view of our data, uh, and thank you. Excellent, excellent work, great. Um, group four. Uh, we are from group five, so shall I continue? Yeah, group five, you can go. Okay. Uh, 
Okay, uh, so this week's challenge is a uh, culture vision, and these are our group members. Uh, to start from the outline, uh, we'll see. Actually, we will not see the project or objective and business needs since it's been mentioned many times with, from my other fellows. So we'll start with the raw data, uh, the methodology we followed, uh, and our future plan, then complete our presentation. So uh, in the raw data, uh, for performing the dynamic creative optimization, Adlido provides us with uh, creatives. Uh, components of creatives such as logo component, the CTA button, the button components, the preview, the preview of the creative, the engagement button, and some more uh, assets. And then we have a data a data set consisting of uh, unique creative ID, uh, the ER and CTR. Uh, I hope by now you are very familiar with ER and CTR, but here is a rough definition. So that, that's just simply the engagement rate and the clicks through it, the number of clicks uh, divided by the number of engagements will give you the CTR. So, so uh, our task is to study how we can extract the features from the image affect those two scores, namely ER and CTR. So to proceed with the methodology, uh, now, since we have plenty of assets in our hands, uh, we need to first extract every possible information from the image. Uh, ergo, we'll do the image analysis. Then we'll perform uh, some feature transformation in, on the extracted data. Uh, here is the main pipeline of the data extraction. <coughs> this is not the uh, modeling pipeline. This is just the data extraction pipeline. So in the leftmost uh, element is our creative so we have our creative and we'll extract some more uh, possible information from the creative we can extract we can extract all text in the image from all components of the creative then we'll extract information about the logo like the position of the logo the width the height and also the logo to area ratio uh, that's also significant to predict our scores then we'll extract some similar information about the CTA button, the position, the width, the height, and the ratio. So uh, we will also extract the three dominant RGB values in the creative. Then we'll finally combine them to make it suitable for our modeling. Uh, next, we also extract a list of objects, the objects count and the unique objects count in a creative. Uh, by creative, I'm, I'm referring to all of the assets, uh, the CTA, the preview, the end frame, the start frame. So, and then finally, we will extract information about the engagement button, right? What the engagement instruction is, uh, text extraction comes here. Uh, what the position is, the uh, width of the engagement button, the height, and also the ratio to the total creative size, the total creative size. So, uh, Aman will take from this and will lead you to the final. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Nati. Can I share my screen? Can you see my screen? Coming. Yeah. Thanks. No worries. Yeah. So uh, this is uh, not really complete, but this is what we attempted. Uh, it is a streamlit dashboard. So uh, first, what we attempted was extracting some uh, uh, start and end frames, since uh, all of the assets that we are provided with uh, don't have those. Mm -hmm. We attempted to extract start in the end frames using Selenium, but uh, unfortunately, after uh, run it, running it locally for above 10 hours uh, and automating engagement, it failed. And uh, we were obliged to work with uh, the data we have, the assets we are provided with. 
then uh, we extracted text. We used uh, the handy Python package, Python Sarak. And after text extra extraction, we further extracted uh, words count, uh, unique words count, uh, and uh, characters count from the text. Uh, the next feature was the logo uh, and uh, CTA and engagement buttons. Uh, and we're not seeing, I think we're only seeing one thing. It's like, are you scrolling or do you want to show us something or just is that what you want? Yeah, I'm just picking up or I can show you the features extracted here. No, 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 it's like before it was not being scrolled. Now we see whatever he spoke was there, but it was just, it was not being scrolled. Okay, go on. Okay. So these were the features we extracted together with uh, uh, their importances. So uh, we can see that uh, CTA and engagement sizes are uh, the most important features next to uh, colors of the CTA button. This red color is the uh, red component of the RGB of the CTA color. And we used OpenCV, uh, which is uh, very handy when working with search activities. Uh, and we extracted the position in X and Y coordinates and performed its ratio to the creative ad. So uh, both the CTA, the engagement, and uh, the uh, logos were uh, compared with the whole preview as a ratio, the LAR attribute uh, is one one example. The LAR is the logo to uh, area ratio. So uh, it tells us whether we should uh, put larger logos or smaller logos in order to uh, create an effective uh, advertisement or create it. And we also detected objects. We used the uh, image AI library in the uh, pre-trained. Uh, and use the Again, pre it's, not, it's not being scrolled. If you are wanting to show something, it's not being scrolled. It's like, yeah, it's yeah, the I, same I, thing. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Uh, I, I just wanted to uh, give some insight. It's not it's in like, the okay. Yeah. It's like if you want to show, if you, are, if you are showing one thing and then talking something else, usually it confuses whether it's because it's frozen or so gone. Okay, sure. Okay, this uh, bar graph shows, no, this uh, line plot shows uh, the counts of all objects per, uh, uh, per creative. So this, the X axis is the creative index. Uh, and this is the number of objects. So this, uh, for example, this, uh, not, uh, creative number uh, 145 or uh, maybe so it has larger object numbers this this indexes of uh, creatives have larger number of objects in them embedded in them mm. another is the width or the size of the cta buttons so uh, 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 creatives indexed here has larger number of uh, uh, wider uh, cta's wider CTA buttons. Uh, it, this is uh, intended to show that. For example, if we check this, yeah, I can I couldn't catch it. Uh, this is the logo to uh, preview of image ratio. Um, so uh, from what we uh, studied, larger logos tend to uh, show smaller KPIs, smaller uh, performance rates in this image is the distribution of uh, the CTR as you can see it's a bar chart and it is uh, accumulated around zero this is a feature importance that I've showed, showed you earlier and this is a correlation matrix this shows uh, how the features we extracted are interrelated we can see higher dependencies over here. The colors are highly dependent. Uh, and also logo height is uh, interdependent on, uh, no, LAR is dependent on logo size. What is LAR? LAR is logo to area ratio, logo to the preview of the image ratio. Hello.
Go on. Yeah. Okay. okay. And this is the evaluation matrix mm -hmm. to the uh, machine learning approaches we uh, employed. We uh, employed three different types of uh, uh, machine learning approaches, and uh, based on the rule of thumb, it can be said that uh, the RMAC values uh, between 0 0.2 and 0 0.55 uh, show that the model can relatively predict the data accurately. Uh, in addition, the adjusted R square mean, which uh, should be uh, at least more than 0 0.7, to show that. Uh, it has a very good value for accuracy, but uh, our model didn't uh, achieve that. Uh, it has uh, an R squared uh, value of less than 0 0.7, so uh, it somehow didn't. It somehow is not accurate. Uh, and another thing on the dashboard is uh, model prediction. It is not uh, completed and it's somehow uh, dummy. You add uh, the number of unique objects, the size of the engagement button, and uh, some other certain uh, characteristics, and it predicts the KPI. But here we only added three uh, of the metrics, so it is not predicting the KPI. If uh, given some grace time, we could uh, finish it. And uh, some of the projects take away in future plans are. Uh, so this project provided us with a very useful skills in imaging computer vision uh, and it exposed us to uh, usage of some libraries and packages. Uh, this should be a springboard project to lift up our skill uh, in image processing. So in the near future, we would like to uh, take more details into account while fitting our model and improve our dashboard to just uh, engulf a link into an, uh, a creative or uh, in, uh, or taking some paths, some folder paths to uh, an asset, to assets and uh, predict the KPI. So this Excellent. is uh, what we've been working Yeah. Excellent. Anyone from the team want to add? Five. Okay, if not, group four, are you anyone from group four? Is there anyone from group four? Uh, yes. Okay, maybe. Uh, okay. Uh, Brahanu uh, prepared. I'm from Group 4, and Brahanu was uh, going to present, but let me just open up the screen and. Yeah, okay. It is not as uh... okay. I think you can see my screen now. Yes, we do. Yeah. Okay. So this week's project uh, is well defined previously by other groups. So it's ad optimization, basically creative optimization, dynamic creative optimization, using computer vision and deep learning. So basically, what we uh, okay, so let me just go through that. So the business understanding is like already given uh, in detail. So yeah, Adulio was, will, uh, will gave us basically this data and we are supposed to extract several features using computer vision and understand which features are basically helping the, the creatives gain more uh, KPIs. Right. So uh, yeah. So basically, uh, a creative contains uh, several features, and also a CSV file was given for us in order to compare the KPIs with the features generated. So those two KPIs are uh, 
engagement rate and click through rate. And basically the game ID means the folder that contains the assets of a creative. Okay. Okay, so uh, let's let's see what we managed to accomplish. So the first thing we took, the first approach we took was like to see the whole thing in an automation pipeline. Personally for me, uh, I was thinking more, even if this is a machine heavily dependent on machine learning, I was uh, actually approaching it from a data, data engineering type of uh, perspective. So basically what I meant by that is in order to create this beautiful and really good models, we need to create this nice CSV files. The, this isn't just my approach. So the, the CSV files must be well fitted, well extracted features. And so, and that shouldn't be just for one feature or two features, right? So not to, this is the, the automation pipeline was the approach I took. So fetching the data, extracting the data and making some, after that, uh, we made some preliminary observations and then we, we started to um, extract features for a single asset, for a single creative, and then we tried to scale it by making it automated. Uh, and uh, yeah, so after we identified what we know and what we don't have, in the assets folder, basically we took an approach of uh, extracting some of the features from the preview links. So in order to, uh, sorry, yeah. So the first thing we did was uh, color extraction and we used the uh, ex ex uh, colors. Yeah, the X colors uh, library to do that. So basically, we were going through each and every one of them. Yeah, so basically we were going through each and, one, each and every one of them and we were creating this, uh, these data frames. So basically the data frames, the color extraction was done like that. And next, the human emotion will be, I think will be uh, better explained by another person which i will leave to a moment uh, and several text extractions was also uh, done on the features so basically the next thing that was done was uh, the position extraction from the cta buttons the the cta buttons the logo uh, and I forgot what the one thing I forgot what it was. But yeah, so basically what we were trying to do here is get the top left, top uh, X and uh, Y, the height, the width, and the total image of the, uh, the whole image in order to make the ratios at the last. Yeah, image segmentation was also uh, done. In the, in the initial place. So the modeling part will also be better explained by someone who, the person who actually uh, do it. So just to show the, some of the features we extracted, basically this was the first approach we took. As I said, we try to analyze what we have and what we don't have first. So basically the, this was the, this was the data frame that we first created. And if I can show you this, this data frame basically tells us the assets, the number of files it contains, the name of the files, and we concatenated them in this way in order to extract the what features it have, right? So that will be clear in a moment. So this is like the distribution of the files we have. So basically more, we have more uh, files around here, around uh, like in the range of 10 to 21. That's when we understand we need to extract several features from the preview link. So we, we did like this, this type of manipulation in order to get how many files we have and how many files we don't have by uh, the 
sorry, by checking for the individual string that we want. So basically this, this type of uh, manipulation were also made. We also saw how many of the files have the preview and how many of them doesn't. Uh, so yeah, so the position extraction and maybe I will uh, leave the human emotion and the others to other group members. Anyone? Um, yeah, thanks. thanks. I'm trying to share my screen, just a moment. All right. Are you able? Are you still trying to? Um. Yes. Just a moment. Sorry. Sorry, Yabrobas. Let us, uh, Margaret, can I continue? Or? I think Margaret has left, so you could continue. Uh, you know, in, in the meantime, you can continue. So. Ah, okay. You can continue, Brown. Let us share the PPT. I think it's visible now. Sorry, my PC was stuck, so I have a plan. I have a plan to present to it, but yeah. uh, in the meantime, in the middle, I, the, my, my PC was stuck. Then I was shared to the group. Uh, and some confusion has happened. So uh, to, uh, to give the overview of our uh, week uh, project, we was uh, divided the tasks and uh, more focus on the future extraction and also my, how the time was also uh, uh, killed with the uh, use for future extraction. Uh, the emotion uh, was done by uh, Margaret, I think she was explain more on that. And the, the text extraction for the text, we can we we would extract the text from the image from the preview preview images in the first page. Uh, for for that, we can calculate the word count in the limit of the character to get more uh, the future. And for the engagement, also we can extract some uh, features from that uh, images uh, for model i uh, now was uh, done the uh, model we we use the uh, machine learning we can't apply the uh, deep learning because of the the future uh, in that the data was uh, still 
we didn't clear uh, properly and also the data is uh, mi minimum i think we will we was we have we have a plan to work on the deep learning but we uh, the approach we used for um, uh, model uh, building first we uh, normalize the uh, data that is using the standard uh, standardized color and also the uh, to go the performance we predict the AR engagement uh, ratio and the CTR uh, button uh, and also we use the random forest to uh, predict the, uh, the the performances and also we can show the estimator effects on the uh, we, we, we was uh, display the estimator with using this The lesson we learned, we, have, we learned a lot about the com computer vision tools like OpenCV and uh, Tesseract and also uh, the image segmentation feature extraction from the image and the video and also building the prediction model using the machine learning. The challenge and the, the next we, uh, was a plan, uh, we have a plan to work on more feature extraction. Uh, there is few future is extract from this so we have a plan to that uh, to do on the more future extraction and also build this within the deep learning technique and also the other is dashboard to display that i think that is all from my side thank you thank you pranu um if uh, margaret, margaret have uh, another, yeah. yeah do you want to show anything uh, yes i'm ready now Go for it. Um, so I'm just going to present a small bit on extracting the human emotions from uh, human faces. The libraries used were DeepFace and also used Matplotlib to uh, view the image so this is just one one data one data set that was um in one of the assets so you just import the image and uh put it through put the image through um the deep face and analyze it and it just extracts the emotions so uh gives uh, the range uh, between angry, disgust, fear, happy, sad, and surprise. And you can see that f from this image, um, it's more of sad than happy. Uh, yeah, so the dominant emotion e extracted was sad, which is not quite what the image says from how I perceive it, but um, the other thing would just be to uh, keep looking for other uh, uh, libraries that extract um, the images, uh, the, the emotions, I mean. The other thing that we tried to do was um, extract uh, the start and end frames from the from 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 the assets in from S3 buckets using the code that Milky shared. So uh, if I just play if I yeah so we managed to extract the start and end frames. Um, let's, let's the image playing and So after it's done, it's just going to take the start and end frames. Uh, yeah, and this is now taking the video. Is, is this extracting or what does it do? Because you're just- It's extracting. It it's extracting the start and end frames for each video.
for each asset and also taking a screen recording uh, then automatically it, it comes here and extracted images so you can see the video and the start and end frames yeah so this sh uh, next thing to be done is to put this in a pipeline such that it goes through all the assets uh, that were provided but this was just for one asset uh, yeah that's all i have to present thanks so um if like what is something that you would highlight from like in group four for example what is what is the one thing that you would highlight as you know something that you are you're happy that it worked um for me i think it's I mean, it's how, not only for you margaret but in general yeah yeah, yeah in, in general i think uh, the main problem that we faced the first time was um, trying to see how the just the creating generating the whole pipeline such that it reads all the images and I think Fish implemented that well so every feature or anything that will be extracted will just automatically go through the pipeline and save uh, and save it on a data frame then that will be used for, it will be easy to model with that. Anyone from the group? I mean, I'll, I'll come to you, Michael. Okay, if not, just in the interest of time, Michael. Yeah, I just uh, said that I was in a chaotic situation, so uh, I just want to highlight some things that we have been doing and we have uh, not completed uh, on our project side. Mm -hmm. To uh, have more features, we have been dealing with aesthetic uh, psychologies of the arts, so that uh, we do have some... Uh, resources that were provided under task 2 which allows us to relate uh, an image with the psychological background of a person and uh, the psychological uh, arousals in a person that can be seen when an, a person uh, sees an image so uh, from the color perspective from the composition and from the texture of uh, an ad we believed that we could be able to uh, extract the emotions that are imposed by this ads for the person so a psychological parameter that can describe an emotion was uh, described like it's an emotion consists of three types of parameters these are the valence arousal and dominance so the valence refers to the uh, pleasantness of the stimulus or the pleasantness of the ads that is imposed to the person and the arousal uh, which refers to the intensity of uh, the emotion provoked by the stimulus or in this case the stimulus refers to the ad we have been using and the dominance is the degree of control that will be exerted by uh, the ad uh, on the user when uh, he or she observes the ad each of these parameters have direct relation with that of an emotion of a person and so we have uh, written some code even though we have not uh, calculated the feature importance for the uh, CTR and ER uh, parameters and also on our side we have tried to make some automation uh, automated uh, scripts that can uh, maybe play some uh, ads that have uh, game engines uh, also this work has not been completed but we have like a good hope that we can uh, implement it and uh, this is uh, what i want to highlight thanks thanks michael great just you know we are way over time 30 minutes but it was fantastic it was really great and um if I think that we would arrange of hopefully that Milky probably if he's still here and Rahel and I'm not sure if Ababa was also joined but I don't think so but they 
basically it will be nice then to also uh, present for the company but if you guys want to have a like based on your observation milky if you want to add anything just um you can also say yeah like hi everyone so most of you did well like you had an amazing like uh, stage on how to approach the problem and uh, like you have progressed like given the data that we have given you like you have added on it more even uh, like some of you have even diagnosed videos as well which is a great thing to do and also i saw some audio analysis and so on so that was really great and overall i guess like uh, even training a model and coming up with an actual uh, implementation and showing us the results was a great thing so overall i think you you guys did uh, a good job so that was really good guys keep it up thanks thanks milky great uh, Ryan, if you want to add anything also you can if not then we would just basically I think great. I'm really impressed. So that's well done, everyone. Um, and definitely in this is this week. I mean, we're going to continue uh, discussing what is the plan for this week. But let's have ten minutes, so we'll come back at forty-five. Just so that means like in basically twelve minutes. Yeah, great. Thanks, everyone. So see you in ten minutes. <laughs>